I'm going to go through the process of adding an O-ring to this assembly you see here. I have a little piston and a cylinder, and we need to seal this. This piston will go through the cylinder. We need to seal the two items together. Now, I started off, I went to uh, McMaster, and you can see this part number here. And it's really nice. I can download parts from McMaster. And I've got the part here, the polycarbonate tube. And you can see I've got a 3.5 inches plus or minus 0 0.035, a quarter inch wall thickness. And the part's 12 inches long. The really nice part about all of this is I can go here, click on SolidWorks, download it and then open it up right there within SOLIDWORKS. All right, now I created this piston, simple one inch thick cylindrical piston. And what I did over there Okay, the diameter of this piston is set to 3.45 inches. And that'll give us a little bit of clearance with that plus or minus tolerance that was on the uh, this McMaster specs for this part. Now, there's a few things we need to do before we make an O-ring groove. You have to make sure that the tools are set up and ready to go. So I'm going to go to Tools, and you come down here to Add-ins. If you don't see it, click the bottom arrow and scroll all the way down here to Add-ins. You might have it turned on on your upper menu. I don't happen to. And I happen to have the SolidWorks simulation. Then you want to click the Toolbox Library, the Toolbox Utilities, and I go ahead and select the SOLIDWORKS utilities also. So you want to make sure at least these three are all selected. And say OK. Now I come up to Tools and I don't see it because that's why I went all the way down to the bottom. Now we go to Toolbox and Grooves. So we're going to put an old ring groove into this piston. Now it'll pop up and this tool can handle retaining ring grooves for you and o-ring grooves we're going to keep it an ANSI inch because that's what the diameter of the cylinder and this piston are and then we have a lot of different types of uh, o-ring grooves we can put in there you can do a face static for gas and a face static groove for liquid this one is really good if you're making enclosures for the rov and you're going to bolt things together We've had really good luck using these tools. And you've got a various static, pneumatic. And what we want is the reciprocating piston groove. Reciprocating means it's going to be going back and forth, back and forth, and moving. Now you notice I have no selected diameter over here. And here are some standard, all the standard O-rings. So what we do is we come along here. And wherever you click is going to be roughly where I put that, where the tool puts the O-ring. Now, if I click too close to over here, it's going to overlap. So you can click anywhere here in the center. And then later on, after O-ring's created, we'll show you how to go and fix it to exactly where you want it. So I'm going to click right about here. Okay. And you can see... It's giving me an O-ring for a 338 O-ring. Selected diameter is 3.45 inches. The mate diameter, 3.5. The groove diameter, 3.13 inches. A width of 2.281. And there's some radius in there. So let's get create. It's done. There we go. There's our O-ring. I'm looking at that saying, well, maybe that's not right where I want it. Remember, our diagrams have to be fully defined. So let's go edit the sketch that was created. Okay. I'm going to 
go normal to that sketch and you see it's blue. A lot of different ways you can do this. I just come up here, fully define my sketch, go for it, and you can see these dimensions here. So, okay. Now, this is the one we're going to be changing, but now I have to move this one, remove this one, and we'll put a dimension out here. All right. Now, I only have one dimension to change that will move this up and down along the face of this piston. You can see down here I'm fully defined. So I'm going to double click on this one here and I say, you know what, I want that 125 thousandths from the face. Put it there. Moves it up. And that's exactly where we want it. Okay, now a couple of things I want to show you here. If you look really close at this face, this face is not, is not perpendicular to the end of the piston. It's angled, and that gives room for the O-ring to squish and then fill this area. So, we've got our O-ring groove. Now let's go back and look at our assembly. And I already had the piston concentric to the tube, so everything's good there. Now we want to get our O-ring itself. Now you remember it says a 338. Let's go back over here to McMaster and O-rings. And you can just type into a 338 O-ring. It brings up all the different O-rings you can have out there. I want to go with a round O-ring. Okay, I'm going to go with a soft O-ring. It's a high temperature, but it's a softer O-ring and a little bit more pliable. And you can have a, a wider range of sealing with this. For the lower pressure, it seems to work a little better. Now again, I can click on here and download the part. I've already done that. There it is. Now we're going to make some modifications to this. Little simple things. First of all, let's go change the color. It's a red O-ring. Let's make it red. Yeah, we'll just choose nice bright red. Have that. Now I want to put an axis in here. And that'll help us with mating on this because it's really difficult to mate with, these, with this revolve. And so I'm going to go to Insert. Reference Geometry, and Axis. And I want to select the two planes. We want that axis going right down to the center through it. So we'll open this. And we want to make sure we're going to do the top and the right. There we go. There's our axis running right down the center. So we're good. Okay. I'm going to save that. Yep. Now let's go over to our piston assembly. And let's see, do I have an axis on that tube? Let me go show it. And it doesn't look like I have one down on that cylinder either. So let's go put an axis in that. Let's see. Two planes. There we go. It's all there. Okay. Let's save that. And go back to our assembly. Let's insert the O-ring. All right, I've got my O-ring inserted here. We need to do our mates now. We'll come across here and we're gonna select the two axes. And we're gonna mate those two. Everything's good. Now, 
the O-ring does not, we can't do a tangent mate to this face because the face is not perpendicular. And we have, you know, it's on an angle. So what I want to do is I want to try and tilt the O-ring, which doesn't work for us. Okay, so we're going to use the top face on that O-ring. So if I come down here and look at my O-ring, and not the top, not the right, we're going to use the front face. There we go. We'll use the front face and this piston here, the face of the piston. Okay. And that puts it there, which is not really where we want it. And I'm going to put a distance of 0.25 inches. Okay. Now, what we need to do, though, is flip that dimension. There we go. And that puts the O-ring right, not quite in the middle, but it puts it in the O-ring groove where it belongs. And we say there. Close this up. And there you go. You've got the O-ring. What's interesting, when you look at this, looking through the acrylic part, the acrylic tube, and you can see the interference parts there, that's the area that the O-ring will be pushing up into the tube. And when you see the O-ring in the tube, it actually looks like that. That's the crush of the O-ring on, on the inner side of the tube. So there we go. There's your O-ring. Everything's good. If you want to turn off the axes, you can come up here and sh turn them off. And that's, there you go.